Good morning. Good morning. Going to start out this morning with number 451, Be Thou My Vision. join me in number 881, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. services online and so thank you for those of you that are joining us thank you for our musicians today uh, for helping us out with the, the, the music and uh, <coughs> we're glad to have you join our services today Let me take this off I know that there are some of you out there who uh, maybe aren't even able to go to church and so I know this is is a, a blessing for you. I want to thank thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, just a few things we do want to mention, and you can help me in remembering these things. One is we started our Christmas in July service last week, and that continues all month with uh, donations to charities. And so we uh, have been able to give to Mountain Mission, but also for this month. We're asking people to bring in certain items to the church that will be taken over to the uh, home to the shelter, West Care Shelter over in Pikeville. And those items are trash bags, trash bags, juice, drinks, water, 
and water toilet and paper. Water and toilet paper. Yes. And if you want to take drink mixes and cereal, that's good. That's fine too. Drink mixes are acceptable. Yeah, we took a few things already, and of course you're welcome to do that. Um, but uh, let us know if you do, if you take them straight over there so we can kind of have an idea of, of what we're doing. So if you live in town, it would be easier for you to just take those to the shelter, do so, and just let, a, let them know that it's from the church, but also let us know that it's been done. Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, communion. Normally this is communion Sunday. Uh, we're going to postpone that. Uh, I'm hoping that next Sunday we'll be able to have our in-person service and we'll be able to have communion that way. If not, we'll have the communion elements available for you to come by and get. We'll do it online uh, if we're online, but we're hoping to be able to be in service. We are probably uh, going to not have Sunday school and a small group. We're not having Wednesday night Bible study this week and probably until um, further notice. So we'll, we'll be talking more about that. We'll be talking some with uh, the board about that. But also just remember, we are planning on having our regular 11 o'clock in-person worship service next Sunday. And everything right now is, of course, up in the air, but that's, that's our plans. And just want to remind you to wear your mask, especially when we're having our, uh, our services and people are walking in together, uh, because it's hard to social distance when you're walking uh, in the aisles and those things. Uh, so especially when you're coming in and leaving, to be sure to have your mask on uh, for those of you that are able to do that. Are there any other announcements, any prayer requests that we need to mention today? I know there's probably some that we have been given, and we want to continue to pray for those that are in the hospital, for those special requests that's come through. And you know who you are, and, and uh, we continue to pray for them. Is there anything else? All right. If not... Um, we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll go ahead and pray for the offering as well. I want to thank you. You know, this is a difficult time, and sometimes when we're not in church, you know, and the plate's not being passed or we're being reminded, uh, it's easy to forget the, the offering and your tithes. So uh, we have the opportunity where you can come by and, and do that, or you can mail it. Uh, but we want to thank you for those who have already done that. And we want to just thank you from the bottom of our heart for your, for your gifts. Um, so at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll pray for the offering. And when we finish this prayer, we'll go ahead and do the doxology. Okay. Father, today we want to thank you another day you've given us God and in the midst of this pandemic when everything is, seems to be crazy and the world is not what it once was but you are the same you haven't changed your plans for us have not changed and God we, we must have learned to adapt to a new world we want to thank you Lord for those that have given today for our offerings and we want to pray you'd bless them Lord today and bless the offering we think about the ministries of this church and how so many organizations depend upon the giving of churches like this we thank you for that and for those that give we want to pray today Father for those, uh, Lord, in a world that, uh, especially those working on the uh, vaccine, we pray, God, that that would happen soon. And we pray, Father, for those that have died in their families during this pandemic. God, help them, we pray. We recognize them, and we want to, Lord, just continue to pray your blessings on our family and our church, our community and the leaders, Lord, as we think about our community leaders, our officers and first responders, 
those who, Lord, who serve every day of their lives. We thank you for them. We continue to pray for our country and, God, the division that we face. We do look for a day, God, and, and we pray that change is happening. We look for a day when, God, when racial inequality would not be something that we would even consider. So, Lord, we come to you and we thank you for your blessings, for your many, many gifts, your bountiful love upon us. And we pray as you taught your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we're going to sing our dance. seated. Our children's moment uh, this week is brought to us uh, by Adam Johnson, and normally Samantha does those, uh, but her grandpa has been sick, so uh, Adam is filling in. And so there is a link. You can find that on our uh, church uh, Facebook page to watch that, uh, the children's moment, and it also will be incorporated into the worship service that uh, Andy is recording and it will be uh, be coming out soon so we'll, we'll be having those out real soon good morning and happy Sunday everybody I am Samantha stand in today for our children's moment and today we're going to talk about miracles now who has used a cell phone or an iPad before I know I have but have you ever wondered how neat it was to be able to call somebody and they could be all the way on the other side of the country, and you still are able to talk to them. Now, I would call that a miracle. That might be a technology miracle, but it's still amazing. Or how about if you have an iPhone and you want to play music? You can just push a button, and then you have music. Now, there's miracles all around us. Uh, can any of you guys name me some different miracles? Right. So different things like maybe the stars in the sky or the ever-changing ocean. Miracles are around us all the time, and that's gifts from God. And something I want you guys to work on this week, or I guess an assignment, since I'm a teacher, is I want you guys to try to find some different miracles that you see or observe this week and discuss that with your family. And I'd love to hear those answers when I talk to you guys next week, and hopefully we see each other in person. But I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I love you all, and we miss you. So we want to thank Adam for doing such a great job with that. And now uh, we're going to ask Sandy uh, Walters to come and sing for us. Bear with me, because I've not been at this long, and I am a little nervous.
It's strange looking out on a small group of people, but uh, it's nice to see all of you uh, out there. So the uh, verse that I'm going to be reading today is from Matthew, and is chapter 14, verses 13 through 21, if you want to follow along. It's Feeding the 5,000. It's a title in mine. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you for the reading of God's word. This is a, a very familiar passage of scripture and 
You think about this miracle, uh, and some people try to lessen the miracle. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. But the interesting thing about this is, to me, is that in this situation, uh, they come to Christ with a problem. And basically the main problem was that people were hungry. And there were thousands of people there. They had no food to give them that they knew of, except they only knew about a little boy's lunch, some fish, some bread. And they said to Jesus, why don't we send everybody home from the conference so they can get something to eat? Because, you know, it's kind of like one of those church dinners when you're expecting uh, 20 people and 100 people show up. And we begin to panic, like, how are we going to feed this many people? There's just, uh, there, we don't have enough food. And somehow, some way, it happens. We, we, we find a way. You know, we, we might have to throw in this or that and add some stuff here, or run to the store, get some cookies. But somehow, miraculously, we're able to feed all of them and nobody goes hungry. And I'm not exactly sure. Uh, about the how of this miracle, except that Jesus performed a miracle. But I want to talk to today more about uh, the what and the why. You know, what did Jesus say to them as they come to Jesus and said, Lord, you need to give them something to eat, or you need to send them home so that they can get something to eat. Jesus looks at them and says, you give them something. You do it. Which is a reminder to me is that God works through people. God always does His work, whether it's the miraculous or whether it's just some uh, kind gift that we bring. He does it through us. You know, God could have chosen to, to do this miracle with just a word. He did as He stood, stood on the bow of a ship and said, Peace be still, and the storm was silence. And He could have done that. But instead, he decided that he would work through the people. And that's what we have to understand that, you know, sometimes we, we say to God, Lord, why don't you do something? And he says to us, I did, like that song, that's why I created you. I want you to give them something. I want you to help. I want you to be a part of this. And, and they might say, well, you know, and you might say the same thing. It's inadequate. What we have is inadequate. We're not able to do it. And God says to us, you do what you're supposed to do, and I will add to that, and I will make sure it works. God works through people. He really does. And He's always uh, chosen to do that. And, you know, I, I've seen people many times in, in hospitals and as we visit people who, who seem to think that... Uh, that they don't have to do anything, that, you know, that they don't, they're not going to listen to the doctors, they're not going to listen to the medical staff because God's going to take care of them. We're all reminded of that story of the guy who drowned, you know, that was up on the roof and the flood came when he thought God was going to take care of him. And in the end found out that God had sent his rescue. God had worked through people, but he refused to accept that. And the same thing is true in our lives. Uh, there's a story that uh, I read and maybe you've seen this uh, a few years ago. It was uh, there was an article, and actually, uh, maybe you saw the the advertisement, the news article, or whatever. It said the Arkansas woman texted father's number every day after he died, and she got a response four years later. Uh, her name was Chastity Patterson, and she was 23 years old. And her father, who was actually her stepfather, but whom she had called dad all of her life, who was so special to her, had died. And as a way to help um, her with her grieving, her grieving process, she texted him every day, even though she knew he had died, and told her about her day, and told her about her life, things that she would have told him had he lived. And even uh, continued to tell about uh, people that she might date. And one, one day uh, 
almost four years to the day that he died of the anniversary, she texted a message to him. And she said that, told him that she, you know, she had survived cancer and, and she had uh, not been sick since he died and talked about a boyfriend that she had met and yet he broke her heart and she joked about the fact that if he would have been alive that he probably would have beat him up and just went on and on about her, her life. The next day she receives a text from a man whose name was Brad, not her father, but a man whose name was Brad who said, I've been getting your texts for four years now. And Brad said, I, I never responded to you, but I, I, I want you to know that your texts have been life-saving for me. I lost my daughter in a car accident several years ago, and having these texts has kept me alive, really. They've meant so much, and I, I knew that this was just God speaking to me. Chastity posted on her Facebook that sometimes God shows up in strange ways. And you know, sometimes God does things through the ordinary that it almost seems miraculous, the way God brings people and things and times together. It's just an amazing thing. He may not always suspend the laws of nature, and oftentimes I think he, he, that's what he doesn't do that. He, he works through people to do great things. One of my favorite quotes by uh, Hudson Taylor is, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. God does some great things through his people. And so we come to the feeding of the 5,000. And the people are hungry. And let's uh, speed up a few years around the 19th century. And we have a, a, a theologian by the name of Heinrich Paulus who looked at the feeding of the 5,000 a little differently. Paulus was uh, not one who accepted miracles easily. But what he, when he looked at the feeding of the 5,000, what he believed and what he proposed is that basically what happened was when all the people with money, the wealthier people showed up, they began to share from their resources. And the sharing of this multiplied until there was enough to feed thousands of people. Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I tend to believe that this was God doing a miracle. I still, I still believe that. But it does bring out a point that God sometimes and often does work through you and I and through our hands and what little we are able to bring to God, God can use that to do great things. Just look throughout the Bible and you see how God took ordinary people with limited and meager supplies and did great things. And He can do that for you and I. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 talk about the fact that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And sometimes we read that and we think that means that, that God can do things that we cannot do. And, and there's, yeah, there's truth to that. But the, the other side of that coin is this, that sometimes God uses us and our means to do great and wonderful things. He is God, and He's able to do many, many wonderful things. And I've seen God work in our lives, sometimes just by uh, what seems like a chance encounter. It's God doing, I think, bringing things together. There's a book called Small Miracles. It tells a story about a lady who, uh, well, her name was Carol Anderson. Her husband, who she loved and had a wonderful relationship, died when he was 35. Another person whose name was Bob Edwards had a wife whom he loved who died when she was 29. They spent several lonely years, painful years, alone, till finally these two met. And they had a wonderful relationship, except for one thing. Bob wanted to talk about the past. He wanted to talk about his ex-wife, and he wanted to talk about, uh, not his ex, but the wife that had died, and, and, and he wanted to talk to Carol about her 
a husband. But it was too painful for Carol. She just couldn't bring herself to talk about it. And she would say, you know, why resurrect ghosts? Let's just leave the past in the past. It's too painful. And so Bob, to his disappointment, uh, continued to not bring those things up. Eventually, though, Carol was able to, to get to the place where she could talk about it. One day they were looking at pictures, and she said, this is me and my husband when we uh, went to France. And we, uh, we went to a place called Loretta's. A very f familiar shop, and and uh, and he said, "You went to Lourdes?" He said, "My wife and I went there too. What an what an amazing coincidence!" And she's like, "Well, that's not such a big deal." I said, "She said, probably half the world goes there." <laughs> but then he looked at that picture again. He said, "Who are those people in the background there?" She said, "I don't know. Just some random people who happened to be going by when we were taking the picture." And she said, I understand it looks why you're saying that because it looks like they're almost posing in our picture. But I, I'm sure it's just an illusion. And Bob said, look at that picture again. That's me and my wife. <laughs> you know, whether God has taken some miraculous thing and making it happen, whether he's suspending the law of nature and standing on the boat and telling the waves to be still, or whether he's just taking a little boy's lunch and feeding thousands of people. God is always doing wonderful and miraculous things in our lives. And sometimes just when we meet the right person at the right time and things happen in such a way in a spiritual moment, you know that the sacred moment. You've been there. Those moments that you could not have planned if you tried. But things come together in, the way, in a way that you were able to experience a God moment. A moment where the universe just seemed to agree and God seemed to just put things together in the right place. And you just realize this is a special moment. This is a special time. I wasn't there when Jesus turned the water into wine. And I wasn't there when he fed thousands of people with a little boy's lunch. But yet I've seen God work in my life, and I've seen him work in the life of the church. And I've seen God do things, even in the midst of a pandemic, that just blows my mind. That when we think, well, this is it, our church is gone, then all of a sudden we reach more people than we've ever reached before through technology. God is able to do that. As I think about the fact that God uses you and I, I think about this little church sitting here on the hill that most people don't even know where it is. People pass by don't even realize it's a church because we're kind of hidden back in here. But think about what is done just through the hands of the people in this church. I think of people like Sarah who go to the uh, Appalachian Pregnancy Care Center and takes all the clothes of those children and washes them and irons them and puts them back and hangs them. Nobody else does that. What a wonderful ministry that is. I think about the many ministries that we do here uh, from this church. And recently we were able to give to the school, the Christian School Mountain Mission. We are giving to help in hands. And we do so on a regular basis. And so many other ministries and things that we're able to do because of people like you. God works through people. And you may say, well, I don't feel adequate. I don't feel like what I have is enough. But yet, if we bring it together, God is able to take that and do something great with it. So I want to encourage you today to keep on keeping on. Try not to give up in spite of the fact that you may not be able to be in church like you'd like to be. But we can always find ways to connect with one another if we try. I want to pray as the musicians come this morning. Lord, right now I pray for everyone who's listening to this sermon and this service. God, that you might bless them in a special way today. Help them, Lord, I pray to find comfort and peace, and to know, God, that you will use them and use people like us to do extraordinary things. Forgive us of our sins and lead us in the way you'd have us go. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Now let's sing Sweet Hour of Prayer, number 496. Let's do verses 1 and 3. and our, uh, Sandy gets ready to take the light out. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, I don't know, we'll look and see who all has attended our service today. If you don't mind, just uh, put a note that you were here, you were attending. I did see my good friend uh, John Fox. Dr. Fox is uh, a person who uh, has been influential in many ways in my life, and he has uh, been uh, the one who has tried to work on preserving the the Wilderness Road, the 1776 uh, Road. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, for those of you that um, are out there and you just need to to know that somebody cares, I want you to know that we care. We care, and that uh, feel free to send us a note or whatever if you need a special prayer. We'll be be sure to do that. May the Lord bless you and keep you today. May He give you His peace and may His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Let's sing. Now let's sing Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Sent forth by God's blessing, I true faith confessing, a people of God from this dwelling take thee. The service is ended, oh now. So oh. 